If you've watched any of the other videos on my channel, you may be aware that recently I upgraded my key light to the Aperture 120D Mark II along with the Light Dome Mark II. And I couldn't be happier with it. It's a fantastic light. It's incredibly versatile and functional, and the light quality is just uh, just amazing, really. But whenever I do something like this and I get a lot better piece of gear, then a lot of times I want to go back and see what if I take the knowledge that I have now that I've accumulated over years of shooting video and go back to what I was using when I first started out. So when I first started taking YouTube seriously, I was using shop lights to light my videos. And it's not really ideal, but they're cheap, and I got a whole bunch of them at a Home Depot for very little money, put fluorescent bulbs in them, and I was off to the races. So I did a whole lot of guitar instructional videos using these shop lights, and I actually got pretty good at getting a high-key background. Um, I feel like at the time I still didn't know a lot about diffusion and how to get a good look on me personally, but the scene started to get pretty good by me just sort of understanding exposure better by using these cheap lights. So uh, now the key to making that cheap light look decent really is the diffusion so in this case I'm gonna use a little cheap umbrella that I got from B&H that was probably 10 or 12 bucks or something just to shoot through umbrella so if you want to go for the cheap lights you got to diffuse them and I highly recommend a cheap umbrella like that it costs about the same amount as one of the lights so you really can't go wrong by getting that and you'll always use it for uh, photography and all kinds of things. It's super convenient and easy to get around with. So anyway, I put two of these shop lights on a stand today and along with the umbrella in front of it to see if I could get a decent look in this very scene that we're looking at right now and then uh, just sort of positioned it so that it would be a little bit similar to how I have my 120D right now and then I just wanted to compare the look and see how I felt about it and I think it actually came out great so let's check it out right now we're gonna switch right over and and here's the shop light setup. So I think these two shop lights coming through the umbrella are doing really well because I've got plenty of light here for proper exposure. I've got the ISO all the way down at 200 on the GH5 and it's plenty soft coming through the umbrella. I don't have any harsh shadows or anything like that. Diffused real nicely and then of course I'm getting a little uh, extra mileage out of it by bouncing off of this card or uh, this whiteboard that's on this side. It's a real cheap whiteboard, about three or four bucks or whatever at a hobby store um, or craft store. And that's just giving a little bit of fill on this side. But again, you can get a lot of mileage out of some cheap stuff if you just uh, think about what you're doing when it comes to your lighting. And it'll make a big difference in your YouTube videos. When I first started taking YouTube videos very seriously, I started doing them with a friend of mine on a guitar channel and he knew a lot more about uh, video and photography than me so he was able to kind of teach me some stuff about lighting in general and really it came down to uh, how you were applying the lights a lot more uh, that was a lot more important than what kind of lights you had really and so I ended up going and just buying a whole bunch of these shop lights at uh, Home Depot uh, because it was cheap and it was a good way to get plenty of light and I just experimented and experimented over and over again until I got the look I was going for and in, in those days we were shooting uh, guitar instructional videos with a complete high key white background and it took me a long time to really kind of figure out how to do that with, with these uh, shop lights but after a while I did get it sorted out and I got a really pure white background and then some decent exposure for myself in front of it. Um, I still had a lot, of, a lot to learn about finessing it and getting a great look of, of, uh, for the skin and everything, but ultimately that was a really good little beginning education in how to use lights and properly light a scene, and it was a good thing for me to learn those things before I started buying actual video lights. Now it was a real relief, I have to admit, when I first bought uh, my first couple of softbox type lights and then ultimately uh, about a year ago ended up buying a couple of aperture lights and then and recently the Aperture 120D Mark II, which is absolutely fantastic. And there's no doubt about it. There's no real comparison in actual uh, usability when it comes to those lights that are really made for video compared to something like this. But uh, it's a great way to start is just to get something that you can uh, get a good look with 
if you just think about what you're doing. So I uh, just want to encourage you, if you're getting into the YouTube thing and you don't have a lot of money to spend on lights, you can get a great look if you just think about what you're doing and buy some things to diffuse that light and make sure that you can get uh, your white balance set right so your colors look right and go for a soft look on the skin. And I think it'll make a really big difference in the end result without you having to spend a lot of money. And it's a really common thing to spend all your money on a camera, maybe a couple of lenses or something like that, and then go, oh, I still need lights. But fear not, there are affordable solutions like this one out there. And also remember that window lighting can be fantastic if the weather conditions are right and you have a good uh, position that you can get in uh, next to a window that has good ambient light coming through it. So anyway, there are some uh, really cheap solutions and some really free solutions out there if you don't have a lot of money to put into lights. And again, I would encourage you to start with just experimenting with things like this that don't require a lot of investment when you first get into it, because you'll learn a lot by just trying to do a lot of problem solving. And it'll also help direct you towards the kind of lights that you really want ultimately when you decide what your needs really are. Okay, I was just editing this footage and I decided I wanted to jump back in here and talk about a couple of the little differences that I saw when I flipped over from the Aperture 120D Mark II as the key light to the pair of shop lights through the umbrella. Now the first and most obvious thing to me was that the background is uh, getting more spill on it when I'm using the umbrella because the umbrella doesn't control that. Um, and I like to control it with the grid. So I put that grid or crate as it might be called on the uh, aperture uh, light dome so that the light doesn't spill into the background and it keeps me a little more lit than the background is. So that's what I normally like. But as you can see here, there's a pretty good bit of light spilling onto the background and sort of lighting up some of these shadows a little bit more. Now, another thing that I noticed is that there's a bit of a green tint. I always notice that with the fluorescent lights. These are daylight balanced, but they do have a green tint a little bit. Uh, you just kind of see it, especially when you compare it to uh, lights that don't have that problem. So when I switched right from the 120D to the uh, uh, shop lights, you immediately see a bit of a green cast over everything. So I have adjusted this footage to match a little better by just shifting the, the uh, tint in uh, Final Cut Pro. So it, it was kind of an easy thing to do to adjust it and make it look a little better. Um, I didn't get super scientific about it, but I did want to make it look a little bit more like the other footage. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're using fluorescent lights, you may have to adjust that tint just a little bit. Now another thing I wanted to mention is that I did keep my rim light or kicker light and my little background lights the same. There are a couple of aperture or actually three aperture lights that I've done a video on in the past. So I kept all those the same. So the only thing I changed out here was the key light. A while back I did a video where I replaced all the lights in the setup with shop lights. So if you want to check that out, click uh, the link up here or over here, wherever it is. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you liked it, click like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. I really appreciate it if you do. And I hope to see you on the next video.